Hello Facebook friends, uh, today, tonight, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, Marek Edelman. Marek Edelman was a great hero of the Jewish resistance in the Second World War and he was one of the heroes of the Warsaw Ghetto Resistance. I've been reading his book, here is his book, The Ghetto Fights, Warsaw 19, what does it say, 1943 to 1945. And there he is at the bottom there, Marek Edelman. Now, Marek Edelman was, uh, before the war, he wasn't a soldier, he was a civilian. And of course, we all know the story of the Warsaw Ghetto. It was a, a familiar story. Uh, the same thing happened in cities all over Nazi-occupied countries in Europe. The Nazis designated one area of the city as to where all the Jews had to live. And if the Jews were fought, found outside that area, then they'd be shot. And all the Jews had to wear a yellow star, a big fat yellow star, to identify them as Jews so that they could be, um, they could, they'd could be shot if they're caught outside the area of the city. So the Germans, the Nazis, uh, the SS, ordered all the uh, Polish Jews, all the Jews in, in Warsaw, to live in the Warsaw Ghetto. They built a wall around them. And then they just walked away and left them. And left them to starve. Of course, they... The Jewish people weren't, that, weren't, weren't stupid. They weren't stupid at all. And so what they did was they built um, tunnels. They dug tunnels underneath the walls. And they'd be shot if they were found outside the walls, remember. So what they did was they, they, they dug tunnels, went out, covered a night, stole food. Every now and again, the Germans would send in a snatch squad. The SS would send in a snatch squad and take a hundred or so, a few hundred uh, Jewish people away to labour camps. And some of the Jewish people they thought, well... Maybe it's better we go to a labour camp because it's starving here. We've no food here. So we'll go to a labour camp. Maybe we'll get fed. Maybe it'll be less bad than it is here. This is hell. Maybe this will be less hell at the labour camp. But they never came back. Eventually, the penny dropped. They put two and two together. They got some intelligence from outside the, the ghetto. It wasn't a labour camp that these people were getting taken to. It was Treblinka. It was an extermination camp. Let's put not too fine a point on it, okay? So the Jewish people said, no, we're not having this. And uh, the next time they went out at night under the tunnels and into the city to steal what they could find or buy what they could find or whatever, they, they got hold of weapons, they got hold of ammunition. And then when the Germans came back, the SS came back, they came under armed resistance. And the Germans didn't like this at all. They weren't expecting it. And so they, their answer, the Nazis' answer, was to shell the ghetto with artillery shells to subdue the Jewish population there, the prisoners. Did this for a few weeks, marched back in, and um, it didn't go well for the Germans. It didn't go well for anybody. Now, let me read a little bit here. The population in the Warsaw Ghetto has been under sustained shelling, this unarmed population, this starving population of civilians. And the Germans marched back in. What does it say here? At 7 o'clock, motorised detachments including a number of, of tanks and armoured vehicles, entered the ghetto. Artillery pieces were placed outside the walls. Now the SS men were ready to attack. In closed formations, stepping haughtily and loudly, they marched into the seemingly dead streets of the central ghetto. Their triumph appeared to be complete. It looked as if the superbly modern army had scared off the handle of bravado drunk men, as if those few immature boys had at last realised that there was no point in attempting the unfeasible, that they understood that the Germans had more rifles than they were rounds for all the resistance's pistols. But look what Marek says, the next line. But no, they did not scare us. And we were not taken by surprise. We were only, made, we were only waiting for an opportune moment. Such a moment presently arrived. The Germans chose an intersection at Miele and Zamenhofer streets for their bivouac area. And battle groups barricaded at the four corners of the street opened concentric fire on them. Strange projectiles began exploding everywhere. Home-made hand grenades. The lone machine pistol sent shots through the air now and then. Ammunition had to be conserved carefully. Rifles started firing a bit further away. Such was the beginning. The Germans attempted a retreat, but their path was cut. 
German dead soon littered the street. The remainder tried to find cover in the neighbouring stores and house entrances, but this shelter proved insufficient. The glorious SS, therefore, called tanks into action. At this point, you think it's all over, don't you? It's not. The glorious SS therefore called tanks into action, under the cover of which the remaining men of the two German companies were to commence a victorious retreat. But even the tanks seemed to be affected by the Germans' bad luck. The first was burned out by one of our incendiary bottles, the rest did not approach our positions. The fate of the Germans caught in the Miele Street and Zamenhofer Street trap was settled. Not a single German left this area alive. There you go. There you go. That's what happened. Now, this went on for months. Went on for months. It was a war of attrition. The Germans were shelling, 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 then marching. And these Jewish people, they never gave in. They never surrendered. They fought almost to the last man. They were slowly annihilated. But what else were they to do? And Marek Edelman, he was one of the battle commanders. He earned his stripes. Big national hero. A Jewish hero, a Polish hero. Quite rightly so. Quite rightly so. After the war, an awful lot of Jewish people from Europe, Central Europe, they all made their way to, um, to Israel in this, this, this new Jewish state which was formed by um, occupying, illegally occupying um, Palestine. Taking life from the Palestinian people. Marek Edelman always refused to go. He lived the rest of his life. He died in 2009. He lived the rest of his life in Poland. The land where he'd seen all these atrocities, all these things happened to him in Poland. And yet he chose to live out the rest of his life in Poland rather than to roof to Israel. Before he died, oh, by the way, Marek Edelman always actively opposed the idea of Zionism from the very beginning. Before he died in 2009, he took one step further. Marek Edelman compared Gaza to the Warsaw Ghetto. He said that in the Warsaw Ghetto, the Nazis were the aggressors and the Jewish people were the victims. Whereas in Gaza, the state of Israel was the oppressor and the Palestinian people were the victims. Now, the whole story I told you before there was so that you would know what kind of a man Marek Edelman was. This is no anti-Semite. This is nobody who hates the Jews. This is someone who fought alongside the Jewish people, a hero of the Jewish people. This is a man who saw his friends, his neighbours, his family slaughtered indiscriminately by the dogs of Nazism, the SS. This is a man on the day when the Lion of Judah roared. They roared! And the scum, flea-bitten dogs of Nazism ran. They ran from Marek Edelman. And this man, Marek Edelman, he tells us, or he told us, he's dead now. May he rest in peace. He opposes Zionism. And he thinks that the state of Gaza, the, the, the siege of Gaza, he compares it to the siege of the Warsaw Ghetto. Peace out, friends.